Hello, my name's Carol and this is my channel Sew Carol and you're joining me today in my sewing room for hashtag Friday Sews. Now, how are we all doing? Have we had a good week? Um, I've had a real roller coaster of a week. I've sewn a couple of very good things and something that, um, yeah, needs a lot more conversation, I think. First of all, I do want to thank Jen from Today in Jen's Sewing Room for creating this wonderful hashtag where we talk about sewing, um, life, and what we've been buying, or <laughs> anything like that. So thanks for joining us. So I've got a couple of things to show you. As I said, I've got some fabric to show you that came this week um, and some other bits and bobs, but I'm gonna start with what I'm wearing. Now this was a blouse I made in spring and then didn't really wear it because then we had the summer weather came and I can't quite remember which blouse it is. I'm thinking it was this one, New Look 6479, which actually I think is the same as that one, New Look 6582. It looks identical to me, but I think it was this one with a kind of tie here, it's got two darts. Um, has it got a satin sleeve? Yes, satin sleeve. Um, I made it out of this crinkle rayon last year. Um, yeah, I think it was last spring this year, but um, still on the fence about it, only because of the colouring on me. Um, but I really like the design and I hope to make a few more this autumn. So I think that's it. So what have I sewn this week that actually was a win? Two wins, one we need to talk about. First one was, I out of these sweatshirting that I got from Echo B in Ireland, I made Simplicity 8529, which I have made many, many times. I just make the uh, sweatshirt here with the split sides. Really happy with it, really love this fabric. Sorry, it's not a sweatshirting at all, it's a French terry, slightly looped back French terry. Really love it, not perfect colour on me, but definitely gonna be a useful colour. It's got the ribbed cuffs, which I always like. I did something slightly different on the splits. Rather than just opening the seam up either side and top stitching down, because they give you such a big sort of extra rectangle for the uh, split, what I did this time, this is probably hard for you to see, but I have slightly overlapped it there by about a centimetre. So that I folded in, but this one is because it's um, not gonna fray anyway. Um, it's only about a centimetre there with a raw edge. But what I did was kind of slot it over. So it just looks a bit more finished rather than just having the big gaping hole like that. I just thought it made it look a little bit different and I would definitely do that again. So yeah, that was my first very successful make. And I've got a blue piece of this fabric and I almost might do the same thing um, with that one. Bit boring, but yeah. Um, so Simplicity 8529. That's got a version with a rolled neck, but it's incorporated into the main body of the, the front and the back. I have done that a few times. Probably might do that again in autumn and winter. The second thing I made was out of this, uh, I guess right, linen jersey mix, very super fine. It was an utter disaster to sew with. I've, I've never known anything like it. But I did Butterick 6859, that version on the front with the kind of ruched raglan sleeves. It's come out okay, um, but you can see, you can see, look, look how fine that is. I mean, it's great. I'll, I'll just wear it with a, like a top and vest underneath. But to sew this stuff, yes, it's stretchy, but once it's stretched, it's not going back. It's just, I'm, I'm gonna stay like this now. You're not gonna compress me back again. So of course, everything's stretched as you did it. Funnily enough, the gathers on the sleeves, if you can see that, came out really well. That bit was absolutely fine. It was kind of doing the neck band. The neck just got wider and wider. Um, and the bands on the sleeves and the bands on the waist should be, should be jersey, but yeah, once it's stretched, nightmare. 
However, it's made a nice little um, navy lightweight top, as you can see. That's two layers and it's still see-through. So I got this fabric from my fabrics in Germany. I would not recommend using um, this type of fabric again. Uh, it just needs such a gentle hand and you had to like really baby it along every time you did anything. But it worked. But I was quite happy with the end result anyway. Now then, I'm gonna actually give you some graphics to explain what happened this week. So here we go, hope you can see this. So this is when you're making most garments. So this is you in your sewing room. So you start off with the planning, the cutting out, the sewing, the trying on, and when you seek an opinion. And obviously it goes from anticipation, excitement to joy. So most garments I make, this is me, this is how I'm feeling. It's normally a steady incline up to the top where I'm happy with something, I've seeked opinion, and everybody says, yeah, I like that. So that's most garments. This garment this week, I have to show you. I have to share. As you can see, all went along swimmingly, and then I sought opinion from my family, plunged to despair. That was the chart for this project. I had such high hopes for this. I was copying, I will admit, I was copying an indie pattern that I've seen. Now this is the second time I've done it, so maybe it's all coming back to bite me. But um, I'll put a picture of the diagram of the indie pattern design. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say, so I'm, I'm trying not to say, but that's the, what I was going for. And to me, I loved the fact that it was just a dolman sleeve kind of t-shirt, um, just cut on angles and all colour blocked. And I thought, what an amazing way to use up lots of bits of fabric. But I don't need to buy a pattern for that. I can use this one. New look, good old 6216. I can just use that. And I can just chop the pattern pieces about and, and make it up. So that's what I did. I did it exactly as they said. Um, so you've got a line going here, then you've got two kind of triangles that intersect. So drew it all out. So I copied the front piece again, I traced it out onto another bit of paper. Then I started drawing and chopping it into pieces. Um, and then I got my coordinating fabrics together. I was sewing it all up. I was so excited. I try it on. Yeah, it was different than what I would normally make. Um, and then I ran downstairs to show my husband and his face said it all. He said, is that trendy? Is that meant to be skew if that line there? Hmm, I said, don't you like it? And he said, oh, it's, it's not your normal style. He said, I don't like that mustard color. So I thought, okay, he's just being difficult. <laughs> I'm gonna send a picture to my daughter my daughter came back and said, Mum, I don't like that. She said, I don't like the colours. Why have you used those colours together? It looks manly. It's and and she said a funny thing was she said, I don't like the mustard. And I had to snigger to myself because I've actually used that mustard piece on lining a hood for something I made her last year. So she obviously didn't recognise it. But I don't know, and I I'm going to wear it because I still, I'm trying it on in the video here and I can't see why people don't like it. Yes, it's very different from me. And yes, I did some color blocking. But see, this is me. I'm not very good at color blocking and working out what colors worked. But I thought I did. I thought I actually worked it out properly this time. See, I thought I was being clever because I had this bit of um, cotton jersey uh, the yellow is brought out with the mustard, obviously the pinks and the burgundy, and it's on a blue background. I thought I did it all right. Um, didn't have enough to do the back, so that's just navy. And the interesting thing about this is all these pieces of jersey are actually a completely different kind of um, makeup. So you've got the cotton jersey, this was a bamboo jersey, this was a cotton jersey as well, and this was a viscose jersey. But actually, they all worked. I did use um, some sort of seam tape um, just to strengthen it, just in case, because um, obviously you've got that point there. But I'm sorry, I, I kind of like it and I can't see why 
anybody else doesn't like it. So there you go. So I just had to draw this out for you to show exactly how I felt when I showed everybody this top. So please be kind because I will still be wearing it. I just can't see what, what's wrong. So updating you on a few things. I put out a video this week where I spun the wheel for a second time. Um, I showed what I've made with the first fabric, spun the wheel for a second time, and this is the fabric still unmade up. Yeah, this was what was chosen. So it's a double faced uh, jersey. It's not cotton jersey. Again, it's gonna be one of those with zero recovery when you stretch it. So I'm gonna to have to be really careful. But yeah, so it stripes on one side, spots on the other. So I've yet to kind of know what I'm gonna do, but I haven't done anything with it yet. I asked everybody about bins in their sewing room last week and I loved all your comments because we all seem to be the same, whether we have one bin or four or five. Um, it's funny because I said I had three, but actually that's not true because I've got one for my uh, threads on the serger, the overlocker, and I've also got one for my scraps as well. So I've got five. I've still got threads on the floor. But I think we all said the same. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many bins you have, we all seem to have threads on the floor. Even those of you that are really careful and sweep up every time you use it, um, we're all the same. I was thinking, wouldn't it be amazing if there was some kind of like sucking device that you dropped a thread and it just whisked the thread away into a bin? It would just be amazing, wouldn't it? So just like um, like a dentist have, you know, when they sort of draw water away from your mouth. Uh, yeah, something like that. That would be really cool. I gave the shirt to Chris on the Sunday because it was our anniversary. I will put the photos of him trying it on at the end of this video. Um, but he did love the shirt I had made him out of that kind of music um, panel print fabric. So I've got some fabrics to show you that I ordered from Echo B. And Echo B, as ever, I should just reach to get it, threw in two rolls of thread. So they coordinate with what I've got here. So I was quite pleased. Uh, oh, I'll start with this fabric first because this is one I saw um, Agatha get from Agatha's Cottage for her daughter. But it's kind of neon geckos. I am absolutely thrilled with this. I bought this for the boys to make t-shirts, but I made a huge error. I always forget when I order a lot of places to check whether they order in half meters or meters. So I put one down thinking it was a meter and it's only half a meter. So I think I can own, well, pretty sure I can only get one t-shirt out of that for the boys. So I might look to buy some more. I think next summer they are going to love this because they love a reptile. Now this fabric here I really love the look of but in practicality I don't think I can wear it but it was this world map cotton jersey. Isn't it fantastic? I absolutely, I am such a sucker for maps and things like that. But I showed my husband and he said, yeah, I love the fabric, he said, but you couldn't wear it. I don't know, is he right? Because in my head I was thinking of like a t-shirt out of it, but I really don't know. I'd have to be very careful on placement of countries, I think. But whether I make some kind of like a beach dress or something next summer, just to throw on or something like that. But oh, I love it. I love all the colours and I love the fact it's a map, but has a t-shirt he might be right on that one this was a piece that um it was in the beyond the pink door box actually i think the different colorways of it and i really did lust after it typical it happened just after i finished my beyond the pink door <laughs> subscription box but i had to get a piece of this it's only a meter but this is the burn lilac colorway and that is going to make a, it's just a super little t-shirt that one i really loved that so I obviously did the right quantity for that. The last piece I'm a bit stuck on. It's a fabric panel, um, a jersey panel, but I bought the large size, but it's not gonna be large enough for the men in my life that I want to uh, make it for. But it's it's fantastic, look. It's kind of a speedometer, obviously speeding, but that isn't gonna be wide enough for, say, the front of a T-shirt. 
it is for me, but not for them. So if I use this, I'm gonna to have to do some kind of color blocking either side, which is a shame, but I really think that's cool. So that's what I bought this week. I also got a couple of pieces of trousery type fabric from Fabric Godmother. Now, I've never ordered from them before in the UK, but oh my word, I'm so impressed. I ordered some stretch white denim. I'll show you in a minute what I'm gonna make with that, which was really beautiful. And some other denim here. And yeah, again, you can see I've cut into it because I'm gonna make something already. But it's not stretch, it's just a um, woven denim and it's just beautiful stuff, absolutely beautiful. So what am I gonna make with these? Out of the uh, blue denim, I am going to make another of my um, cargo mashups that I did out of the green twill, which I have to say, I keep wearing those trousers and I love them. So that was uh, using the pockets over the basis of that and using the pockets from this one. So I'm making up a, another of those, all cut out, ready to go. A couple of you asked me how I did it. It's basically a case of just adding extra pockets onto this one, but I might do a bit of filming as I go to kind of show you, but it's easy enough. You can change any pattern just by swapping out pockets. And what I'm gonna make with the white stretch denim is when I was on holiday this year, the gap I realized I had was a pair of white capri jeans. Um, I've got white linen trousers, but I wanted a pair of white capris. So I'm gonna make, before I forget, I'm gonna make this one, which is my favorite trouser pattern, which is Burda 6534. These here, I have made these for about six years. Keep making them and they're really good. So I'm going to make, that's all cut out, so I'm gonna make a white pair of capris before I get, forget when it comes to next holiday or next summer and I realize I haven't made them. I have had to do a couple of other little things. I had to uh, hem my some more of my father's trousers. Do you remember I did a few, oh gosh, about a couple of months ago now with the blind hemming foot. And I have to say, I am so glad that I do YouTube because I came to do it and I had no idea how to do it. I couldn't remember at all. So I had to scroll back to my videos to see exactly what I did and the settings I did the sewing machine on. So thank goodness I've got that. What I should have done and what I should always do in cases like this when I do something new is actually write it down. That would be really helpful. The other job I did was a lovely little job which took me right back and that was sewing on some Beaver Scout badges onto my grandson's jumper. I love doing that because it just takes me right back doing the little blanket stitch around all the, the badges so that was good fun. We uh, had a good weekend, a good wedding. I'm not going to be able to put any photos up of the wedding because uh, we're not allowed to. But I've got a, just a couple of photos of um, my husband all pushed up and my son and, and I have got one with me, with Chloe, but not in the dress because um, I'm not allowed to show those. But yeah, I will share those with you at the end. Now this weekend, we were going to go away in our caravan for the weekend, but we've decided we've been away so much recently, we just want a chilled weekend at home. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, it's meant to be really sunny, um, but very cold at night. So we're just going to uh, maybe go out and about and see some things or do a couple of walks or something like that. It does mean, of course, that I can get uh, doing some sewing as well. I've finished the pair of trousers that I was making for a collab with Izzy. Uh, I've got a lot to say about them. Um, but I think that video is going to be coming out on the 24th but yeah it's been a busy week in the sewing room I have to say uh, we did oh we also went to see uh, I've nearly forgot to tell you a, a comedian he came to Dorset a very famous comedian called Michael McIntyre I think I've talked about him on this channel before um, a certain sketch of his but yeah we <laughs> went to see him this week um, the whole family so that was really good fun i don't often get a chance to do things like that i'm recording this on a thursday as i very often do because tomorrow 
I'm going with my mum to the annual pilgrimage, as we call it, to Shepton Mallet in Somerset. Is it Wiltshire or Somerset? Somerset. To see the Craft for Crafters show. So this is a show, um, it does a couple of places in the UK, in the south of England particularly, um, but it's Craft for Crafters show. They quite often have like big quilts up, um, so that'll be quite interesting to see. I think they've got a new quilt room. They sell all sorts of crafts, and it's interesting how trends have gone year on year. It used to be lots of card making, and then it was something else, you know, trends change in the craft world. They do tend to have a few couple of stalls of dressmaking fabrics, but it is mainly quilting fabrics and wool and other things. And you can watch people having a go at lace making and, and all sorts of things. So I always go with my mum every year. So we are trekking there tomorrow. So I'm quite excited for that. It's always a lovely day out. So I try not to buy too much, but then my mum is there to keep me in check if I do want to buy any. <laughs> I think that does it for me this week. It feels like it's been a really quick one, I'm not so sure. Um, to round it up, it's been one of those weeks, isn't it? It really has. Thank you so much for joining me. I do hope you join me again shortly um, on next week's Hashtag Friday Sews, if not before. But thank you and uh, have a wonderful weekend full of sewing and craft. Bye for now.